like to read a scripture in opening. It's in Revelation chapter 14 and verse number 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we humble our heart before thee today with this dear family and friends, Lord, we're thankful for the life of Sister Bird. And Lord, as we come together, we ask that, Lord, you would bless each and every one. Lord, you said it was better to the go to the house of mourning than it was to the house of feasting. And Lord, we're here today, Lord, to mourn with those that mourn. We're here to rejoice with those that rejoice. And Father, we ask that you'd bless our time together. May you and your Holy Spirit minister to hearts today that each one will be encouraged and leave here with hope today. And we'll give you the praise for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Time and time again, I sought for Jesus. Time and time again, he heard my prayer. Yes, time and time again, my heart grew weary, but I know that Jesus was there. Time and time again, he understood. If you know it, sing it with me. When I thought I couldn't, well, he said that I could. Well, he will keep me faithful. He said that he would, yes, time and time again. Oh, and time and time again, he walked the hillside. Time and time again, sheep would go astray. Oh, time and time again, his tender voice of mercy was calling them back to his way. Oh, and we sing time and time again, he understood. When I thought I couldn't, oh, well, he said that I could. Oh, he will keep me faithful. He said that he would time and time again. Oh, yes, time and time again. He said he loved me time and time again. He told me so, oh, time and time again. His tender voice, so loving, would show me the right way to go. Oh, yes, time and time again, he understood. Yes, he said, oh, that I could. Yes, he will keep me faithful. He said that he would time and time again.
Thanks, everybody, for coming today. Um, what we're here today is to celebrate uh, my mother's passing. Uh, she had a lot of suffering in this life, and now she, there's no suffering. She's dancing and praising Jesus right now, and for that, I'm happy. Uh, I'd like to read Psalm 91 with you guys. Uh, those who um, living, I'm reading from the New Living Testament, New Living Translation. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust in him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from every deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies by the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, he will make, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. He will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up in their hands so you, you will not even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call upon me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will re reward them with long life and give them salvation. And that's what my mother has. She's had a long life and salvation. And that's... Um, you know, I'm, I'm sad that she's not with us any longer, um, but she wrote a, um, she had a dream, and I want to share you guys with what she wrote. Um, it's called Heaven's Grocery Store. I'd never seen this before, but when I read it, it gave me another insight on the grip that my mother had on God. Excuse me. I was walking down life's highway a long time ago one day. I saw a sign that read Heaven's Grocery Store. So I got a little closer. The door came open wide. And when I came to myself, I was standing there inside. I saw a host of angels that were standing everywhere. One handed me a basket and said, My child, shop with care. Everything a Christian needed was in that grocery store, and all you couldn't carry, you could come back for more. I just, first, I got some patience. Love was in the same row. Further down was understanding. You need that wherever you go. I got a box of wisdom and a bag of or two of faith. I just couldn't miss the Holy Ghost, for it was all over the place. That's amazing. I stopped to get some strength and courage to help me run the race. By then, my basket was getting full I remembered I needed some grace. We all need grace. I didn't forget salvation for salvation that was free. So I tried to get enough that to save both you and me because we all need that. Then I started up to the counter to pay my grocery bill. 
for I thought I had everything to do my master's will. As I went up to the aisle, I saw that prayer, I saw prayer, and I just had to put that in my basket. For I knew when I stepped outside, I would run right into sin. Peace and joy were all plentiful. There were on the last shelf. Song and praise were hanging near, so I helped myself. Then I said to the angel, Now how much do I owe? He just smiled and said, Just take them everywhere you go. Again I smiled at him and said, How much do I owe? He smiled again. My child, Jesus paid your bill a long time ago. Praise God. For him, I'm thankful. He paid our bill. And even we didn't deserve it. We owed a lot. And we were never thankful. And she's ended, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. Excuse me. Just had to read that for you guys. And I wrote some words that I recalled as a child. I remember vividly that as a child, when I woke up every day to go to school, the first thing that I got in the kitchen was a big hug from mom. And uh, a couple of love taps on the back. I knew she loved me every day. She was also very supportive for my school activities like baseball and playing with friends and spelling bees contest. Even watched her having fun in bowling league. And uh, she was having fun when she caught a four and a quarter pound bass on a half rotten worm. She was loving that. Her most focus in life was living the way God intended by displaying the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. She was instrumental and vital in leading me to God at a very young age. What I could have skipped was a ride from Washington Courthouse to Springfield with two of her favorite friends covering themselves with what seemed to be a half a gallon of perfume. (laughs) (laughs) And it was almost an hour from Washington Courthouse, but it was worth it. I also knew mom that Carries a huge burden for the lost, especially her family. I heard her praying and crying mercy many times. She kept staying positive, though, even when things got looked hopeless. She was competitive and Another thing I experienced with mom was was care for Kevin alone. She endured years of struggles and pain when 
she moved to Kentucky and be with me and went to the college that I intended. And that's where she broke her knee. Just she wanted to be with me and and uh, she brought Kevin and took care of me. All of her life was dedicated for caring people and praying for others. She came in contact with. That's what who, that's what who she was. Just that this past summer though, she told me that her bags were packed. She was ready to go. Another favorite memory is to hear her singing inspirational songs. And uh, when she go to the store to buy a greeting card, she would get tickled and cackle like a chicken by herself in a store. And everyone was like, what is that? It was, it was my mom, and it was, she was funny, and I wasn't embarrassed. In closing, I miss my mother. But there will be a time that, and I know there will be times that will cause me to remember her, our times together. But I know that she's in heaven dancing and worshiping without pain or regrets or sorrows. It will be so awesome when I can see her again. Does anyone else have anything to add to celebrate her life? You're welcome to come up to the stage. I would just echo what Kevin or Rocky was sharing, and she had such a burden for her kids. She wanted so much for her kids to come to the Lord. And I can re just remember he hearing her prayers. And uh, she loved her kids. Man, did she love you guys. We want you to know that. Um, her singing, her laughter, she was just, um, she had her particulars, which we all do. And I just, I just loved, I loved her smile. Um, she was just such a blessing. And uh, she had such a relationship with the Lord, too, that was very encouraging. And uh, we had our time of prayers. I can remember, too, a real vivid memory. Her and Kevin would always pray at the bed. So when it was time to go to bed, Kevin and her would have their set time, you know, and they would, they would, she would usually, I mean, well into her years, they, she would bow, she would bend her knee and pray at the bed, and they would pray together. And it was just such a precious sight. So it's just a wonderful life. She lived a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful life. She loved Jesus with all of her heart. And she wanted everybody to love Jesus. And she's got a rich legacy that she's leaving behind. So give praise to God that we will see her again. This is not goodbye. This is I'll see you soon. I'll see you later. So praise God. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Come on. I just, I just want to let everybody know how thankful I am for the grandma that I had. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say. I don't say a whole lot anyway, but it just, uh, everyone knows, you know, she's a great woman, but, you know, she's very instrumental in how I feel about things in life. I mean, she stayed steady the whole time. She didn't change her mind or anything like that on things she stayed a Christian and she loved God from the beginning to the end as long as I knew her mm -hmm. and uh, that was a you know it was a good witness to me you know 
uh, that wee little woman. There wasn't the biggest. No, no one in this world could change her mind. <laughs> it wouldn't be done. And uh, that's that's how I want to be. I want to be. I want to do what's right. It don't matter what's going on. And uh, I'm thankful for the witness I had through her and the witness that she had on my dad. And uh, uh, she, he's a great he's a great man now. And I I'm thankful for everything that's going on and uh, what the Lord has done. And uh, no no one has any doubt the life she lived where she is right now. There's no question. And it's uh, that, that's that's the way to be. That's the life to live. And it's uh, we ain't crying for her. We're crying for each other, you know, or for ourselves. And, uh, you know, what we're missing. And, and I, I'm just thankful for her and uh, just want to keep on just like she would have it and just like she would if she was still here she'd be still doing the same thing and uh, i'm just very thankful for her You didn't. Now's an opportunity. What a powerful, powerful testimony we just heard. <clears throat> Heaven's grocery store. I'd never heard that before. What a powerful, powerful message. <clears throat> Sister Edna. Aldina Bird, 89, of Springfield, passed from this life on Thursday, November 12th, 2020, at Springfield Regional Medical Center. She came into this world on July 17th, 1931, in Fayette County, Ohio, the daughter of John Preston and Margaret L. Stevenson Roberts. She attended the Possum Road Church of God for many years. She enjoyed fishing, playing board games, loved cooking, always helping somebody else, enjoyed and loved family, and most of all, God, and she loved to sing. I think she was kind of famous in these parts for her chicken and noodles and monkey bread. <clears throat> I'm glad I was introduced to monkey bread several years back. That's some good stuff. I'm a diabetic now and can't eat it, but boy, I loved it back then. <laughs> she made it the best. Edna survived by her children, Terrence L. Davis, Victoria Jean, Ike Potts, Randy M. Bird, Richard K. Bird, and Ronald G. and Sandra Bird. She's also survived by her brother, Harold Roberts, and sister-in-law, Dorothy Roberts. She has 12 grandchildren, 17 great-grandchildren, several nieces, nephews, and cousins. She was preceded in death by her parents and her husband, Ralph Edgar Davis, Jr., and her grandson, Justin Bird. Granddaughter, Brianna Bird. Also her sisters, Leona, Edith, Ethy, Verla, Verley, Betty, Garnet, Lucille, and brothers Wilbur and Gerald. She didn't have a small family. But I can tell you she was a blessing, no doubt, to her family. I was trying to find out and figure out how many years I'd known her. I couldn't, couldn't remember. I remember I was a little boy when I met her. And that's been a long, long time ago. But she's always been a blessing to me. Been a blessing <clears throat> to those that she knew. After hearing these things that I've heard already in this service, it's all I can say is amen to that. What a life that she lived and what an example she set. I, uh, I wrote a poem some years back. I'd like to share it with you. Not only for mothers that were faithful to this, but those that are still mothers that are setting an example. Mama, you have a job to do 
but only, Mom, if you'll be true. For what a task to teach and guide, build something that the world can't chide. To form a life that will please God, no room for carelessness or slipshod. For every act that you shall do, the children are sure to follow you. You train them in their younger days, and hope all you teach still stays. Within their hearts, sketch deep in stone, that if someday they start to roam, that it'll be a reminder still when the day shall come that so was ill. And they'll return to find at last the peace in God you showed in time past. For Mama, you've a job to do that no one else can take for you. So Mama, when it's hard to do, please Mama, we're counting on you. <clears throat> I couldn't help but think of that when I thought of Sister Bird. What an example of a godly life. She wasn't moved by what people were doing around her. Whether people liked it or people didn't like it. Oh, she wanted everyone to like her, just like everybody else. But she was willing to do what was right and live right, regardless of what was going on. As she lived her life, what a blessing to be able to live each day out. I tried to find out, ask a few people. Maybe someone knows here, and if you do, just holler it out. It'd be all right. I don't know how old she was when she gave her heart to God. Does anybody know? Anybody remember giving a time whenever she first gave her heart to God? It's been so long that most of us aren't old enough to remember it when she gave her heart to God. Probably the children all knew her as a Christian from the time that they were born. But there was one day when she realized that she had went her own way. And because of that, her iniquity was laid upon Jesus. And she accepted through faith in that blood of Jesus. She accepted that sacrifice that God had given for her and yielded her life to him. That was more than just a belief in the mind. It was more than just saying, you know what, I'm just going to believe in God from now on. That belief that she had caused her to surrender her daily living to her every day, rising up to see what God would have her do today and live for him. And there she enjoyed, just as, <laughs> I can't get over that. I'd like a copy of that if I could sometime, of that grocery store. It's when she found those things in her life, God give them to her. You don't get them on your own. God has to provide that. And you have to go to God to get it. You know, I think a lot of times when people say, well, there's nobody that's good. Well, I can tell you this. When Jesus was called good, he said, why callest thou me good? There's none good but one. That's God. But you realize what he was saying to that man when he said that? You realize he was standing there talking to God? Jesus was God in the flesh. And Paul said, it's no longer I, but Christ that dwelleth in me. The only way we can be good is Christ that liveth in us. And when we look at all the goodness that our sister displayed and lived, and we can say, honestly say, it was good. We can, and I know if she could speak to us today, and she has spoke to us many times through her life, and let us know that it's not just me. It's not my abilities. I haven't got a hold of my own bootstraps and picked myself up. It's been Christ that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. And she give glory to him because it's in him that we live and move and have our being. And I thought of this scripture today as we consider this. It's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 1. For we know... That if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not that we should be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we're always confident, knowing 
that while we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in their body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and trust also are manifest in your consciences. When we think about this, this earthly house that we live in down here, we're faced with a choice every day. We can either live after the flesh and live according to the desires and lusts of the flesh, or we can yield our members to God and there live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. And it's no longer us then that is living through us. It's Christ living out His life through our lives. And what a blessing. I preached last Sunday a message back home on the thought of what's so wrong with being a Christian? What's so bad about having love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith, all these blessed things that God gives us as a Christian, what is there to be bad about that? It's a wonderful, wonderful life to live. It causes us to treat our families right. It causes us to treat our neighbors. Who wouldn't want to live beside a Christian? Who wouldn't want to be around? Sister Bird. <laughs> she was a pleasure to be around. She was a joy to be around. It was a blessing. She uh, had a desire. I believe she had the heart of Christ living through her. And just as been expressed, she had such a love for her family, for her neighbors, for her friends. For anybody she heard that was in trouble, she knew how to pray. She knew how to access the power of God. God doesn't always take all of our sufferings away, but I can tell you he'll give great grace to be able to go through them. And not only go through them, but go through them with joy. Go through them and on the other side testify of the strength that God gave. And I believe that was her life, was a testimony of the strength that God gives. Even in the hardships, I never heard her complain, never heard her fussing about her lot in life. She'd found Christ, and he was sufficient for all the other needs, all the other tasks that she had to go through. She was willing to joyfully do them as in service to the Lord. What a blessing that is. What a blessing to have that heritage. You are blessed as a family to be able to look back. I know today there's pain because she's taken from us. But there will be many days to come when you think about her. And instead of wanting to cry, there will be times of laughter. You'll remember the little things that she used to say, the little things that she used to do that brought you joy, that caused you to just be who you are. What a blessing it is. But you know, <clears throat> this earthly house has got to be laid off. I think about the psalmist when he talked about three score and ten, and by reason of strength, four score. Well, she outrun that by another nine years. <laughs> so I don't know whether you'd call that super strength or just what you'd call it, but she made another nine years after that. God seen fit to leave her here for a purpose to be an example, to help others. And that was her burden, was to help others. You know, when we face death, when we've made our preparations, Paul said in his letter to the Philippians, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. He was saying to live is Christ being displayed. Jesus said to Philip one day, if you've seen me, Philip, you've seen the Father. And I believe as children of God, we can say, if you've seen us, you've seen Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is living in our lives. 
and living through. And I believe we could see Jesus in the life of Sister Bird. We could see his character. We could see his love. We could see his compassion. She was more than a mother. She had a love, the love of God, shed abroad in her heart by the Holy Ghost that caused her to be a true child of God. And what a blessing that is. When we look at death, we don't have to look at it with a, a fear and a dread. I think about what Paul said when he wrote his letter to the Corinthians. He said, the sting of death is sin. Now, I've often thought of this. If a bee came flying in here right now and lit on you, you'd make haste to get that thing off of you, wouldn't you? Because of the sting. It'll hurt. You don't want to be stung. But if the stinger was removed, and you knew that bee couldn't hurt you. Would you be afraid of it then? If you knew there was no sting in it. Well, that's what Paul used an allegory of that when he talked about death. He said the sting of death is sin. But thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If we'll deal with the stinger now, the scripture tells us some men's sins go before them unto judgment and some men's sins follow after. We just read that we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give account of the things done in our body, whether they're good or bad. And so if we'll deal with that sin while we're here in life, it takes the stinger out of it to where there's no sting in death. Whenever it comes time, I like to refer to it as graduation. I believe a sister mentioned it earlier. She's graduated. <laughs> it's just a step from this life into eternity. She already had eternal life. You say, why? Because Jesus said, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. So she already had eternal life while she was living here. That life didn't stop. When her soul left this body, the real person went on to go to be with the Lord. For me to live as Christ and to die as gain, Paul said. It's a graduation. It's a promotion. It's a time where there will be no more suffering, no more pain. She can never be tempted again. You say, well, it wouldn't have done any good for the devil to tempt her to do something wrong well I can tell you he's not a quitter he don't give up until we leave this world but he's done at that point and you know as long as we're here Christ gives us power to resist the temptation I'll share this with you I was preaching one time and I said you know I used to have a bad habit of tobacco and the Lord when he saved me he took all that from me and been 20 years I'd been saved at that time and I said wouldn't do the devil no good to tempt me with tobacco I've been away from it for 20 years I went to the speedway the next day paying for my gas in the truck and as I was standing there the cigarette racks was hanging down they were filling them and there was Marlboro's right in front that was my brand and I tell you what I could taste them things the old devil said to me, he said, why don't you buy one? Nobody knows here. Nobody knows you here. And I stepped back from the counter and kind of shook my head and thought, what in the world? And the Lord spoke to me right then. He said, you remember what you said last night? He said, you said that you've been away from him for 20 years. It wouldn't do the devil no good to tempt you. I said, yeah. He said, it's not how long you've been away from him. He said, it's my grace keeping you. If I'd withdraw my grace from you, you'd be as bound and more so than you ever were. You know what I did? I walked out of there saying, thank you, Lord. I went back to church the next service, and I said, i got to correct something I said last service. <laughs> and I told him what had happened. You know, it's God's grace. That love that we have for him that keeps us faithful, keeps us true, because we love him, because he first loved us. People say it's so hard to be a Christian. Not when you're in love. It's not hard for you to love your companion, is it? 
It's not a bit hard. When you're in love with them, you're happy to come home to them. But whenever your love grows cold, that's when things happen. But dear ones, our love for God is not growing cold. Sister Edna's love never grew cold. You know why? If you're going to keep a fire burning, you've got to feed it. And if you keep feeding that fire of love in your heart towards God every day, I'll tell you what, he keeps feeding it. He'll keep it fed on the other end. Amen. To where your life can be filled with that love. I want to tell you, there's hope. We're not laying our sister away in the cemetery. She already left us. It was time for her to go home. The Lord said, come on home. And she did. She's not dead today. She laid this body down, but she's not dead. She's more alive than she's ever been. She's enjoying I don't know what heaven's going to be like. There's not a whole lot of scriptures that describe heaven. But I can tell you this, Paul got to see it, and when he come back, he said it wasn't lawful for him to talk about it. But after that, he said, I've got a great longing to go and be with the Lord. Now, I'll tell you what, that's good enough for me. Whatever he's seen created a longing in him. And I want to tell you, I've seen enough of the Lord right here in this life. That if it's going to be better than this, I absolutely want to go after a while. Amen. I want to go because it's so good to serve him down here. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. When she was young and able to do a lot of things, she was so busy. Now as she got older and not able to do, I thought of the last visit I had with her. There she was laying in the bed. She was so sick when we come in. We had prayer with her, visited with her for a while. And then they started singing. She sat up in the bed and was singing. Praises to the Lord. I didn't think she had enough air to do it, but she did. She sang it with all her heart. And I'll tell you what a blessing. What a wonderful memory I have. Amen. Of that time. Heaven came down and glory flooded our souls. What a blessing it is to walk with the Lord here in this life. And I want to encourage you today. If you don't know the Lord, I don't know many of you folks. I've only seen you today for the first time. Some of you I've seen it few times before but I don't really know how you live I don't know what kind of relationship you have with Christ but if our sister could speak to you today she'd rise up and say it pays to serve Jesus it pays every day it pays every step of the way don't get weary keep pressing on because it's worth it all it's worth it all I believe she's seen Jesus while she was here She's seen him in her own life, seen him working. And you know, I don't believe he was a stranger when she crossed through the gates. <laughs> Amen. That was her brother. Amen. You know, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. She knew Jesus as a brother down here. And thank God she's gone to forever be with him now. I want to encourage you today, if you don't know the Lord, please find a place and a time to humble your heart before God. You're missing out on the best thing there ever was. Amen. I believe one of her favorite songs was, He's the best thing that ever happened to me. And I can tell you, I share that testimony today. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. I don't just say that now. Sisters like her, my mother and others that lived before me, they showed me that being consistent, living the same, no matter where you are, no matter who you're around, you don't change with the crowd you're with. You're a Christian. You're a servant of God. You're living for God 24-7 all the time. There's never a time to step out of the Spirit of God, but to live consistently. And they showed us that it pays. And I'm so glad now I can be able to show it to others. And I encourage you, if you don't know him, people say it's hard to become a Christian. 
I read about a man that went in the temple, and he was so ashamed of the way he lived, he wouldn't even lift up his eyes, but he smote upon his breast, and he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You know what Jesus said? That man went home justified. He was cleared in the courts of heaven. How hard is it to give up yourself and just say, I'm done, I'm not able to do what I really need to do in life by myself. I need God. People say, well, I don't want to turn to God when I'm in trouble. I got news for you. Ain't no one ever turned to God when they wasn't in trouble. It's when we realize we're in trouble and we need help that he's so near to help us. Whether it's forgiveness whether for our past. I run into people since I moved back to Ohio. I was away for 32 years. And I run into people now and say, oh, I remember when. I said, hold it. That wasn't me. They say, yes, it was. We know it was you. I said, that was the old man. He died at the altar of prayer back in 1977. And a new creature started over right there that day. And I want to tell you, whatever you've lived in your life, if you're ashamed of it or if you're, you need forgiveness for it, I'm going to tell you, God can start you over today. You can start from now. And be a new creature and all those things, all those sins can be removed from you to where they will never meet you at the judgment. Send your sins ahead through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ so that they don't follow you to the judgment and there find you guilty and lost on that last day. Let me encourage you today. Serve him with all of your heart. Give him the best of your years. When you need someone to comfort, he'll wipe away all your tears. He'll make it well worth your while if you'll be faithful and true. The windows of heaven he'll open and he'll shower his blessings on you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you for the life of our sister. So thankful that you seen fit to reach down one day and save her, lift her out of sin. Lord, you came into her life and made her life worth living. And she lived out as an example to all of us the beauty of holiness. Lord, we ask that you'd bless every heart, wrap your great arms of love around each one. Father, we don't mourn as those that have no hope. We have hope that, Lord, when you come again, our sister will be with you. And, Lord, we'll all go to forever be with you. So, Father, help us each one. If there's anyone here that don't know you, we know her desire would be that they would come to know you. Even this day, I pray that you'd speak to each heart. May your love be manifest that, Lord, you and you alone would be the one that is lifted up and exalted in our lives. Father, we ask you, Lord, blessing these closing moments. Lord, bless as we go out to sow this body into the ground. Lord, we ask that, Lord, you'd bring comfort to every heart. We'll give you the praise for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen.
Folks, before I dismiss everyone, I know on behalf of the entire family, they're very grateful and thankful for your love and your support during this time of need. And also for those that were tuning in and watching online, thank you for all your support too. At this time, we'll dismiss you from the back of the room forward. If you wish to take that time and pass by the family one last time and also the casket, you may do so then onto your cars. If you'll be serving as a pallbearer, I just ask that you remain in the hallway until further instructions. We'll start in the back, please. <laughs>